when you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality. Who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor here at Ventura TV on this day. And once again, we're talking politics leading up to that June 3rd primary. It's fast approaching. And today we'll be talking to a candidate who you may or may not know. She's running for District 1 City Council right here in the city of Fresno. And of course, yesterday they released the budget, at least the mayor did, the proposed budget. 436, Me TV, option 11, do call in. Please do turn down the sound. Back in a moment. So all this week we're talking politics, of course the June 3rd primary, just a couple of weeks away, not more than, and then uh, in November is the general election. And remember in June, when you vote in the primary, the top two candidates will move on to November and take part in that election, of course, unless somebody just wins it outright, it's 50% uh, plus one. And so tomorrow on the program, you may want to tune in because we have Rachel Hill, a little bit of controversy with her running for judge seat 15. Uh, yesterday, uh, we had Lisa Gamoyan on. And on Friday, guess who's going to be here? Lisa Smitkamp. Of course, she is running against Egan uh, for that DA spot. A lot heating up. You may have seen the Fresno Bee uh, earlier this morning, of course, uh, taking pot shots at each other back and forth. Now, here is the other big story on the front page of the Fresno Bee. It has to do with the city budget, $1 billion. The mayor of Fresno, Ashley Swearingen, releasing that budget uh, yesterday. It's a proposed budget. And we have a council member, or not a council member, a council candidate who is running in District 1, hopes to be in office and wants to be in office, wants your vote. Let's roll the videotape and I'll show you exactly who I am talking about. Hey, who's that riding up on a bicycle there? Who is that? Wow. Well, you're looking at 32-year-old Esmeralda Soraya walking or riding door to door in District 1 yesterday and taking some notes there. She's trying to gain a foothold in a district where she doesn't really have too much name recognition, but gaining a foothold, as I said, sometimes that can be an uphill battle, though. Now, my friends, Esmeralda is signaled, but keep in mind, this is not the dating game. This is Connect With Me. She is here to talk about the issues, the budget, and why she deserves your vote on June the 3rd. She was born in Tulare, went to Berkeley, then on to law school at Davis. Later this year, she'll be teaching at Fresno City College. The two big names in the race appear to be Kerry Canelano and Rama Dewar already appeared on this program. But keep in mind, unless someone wins this thing outright in the primary, the top two finishers will go on to November. Live in our studio right now is Esmeralda Soraya. She is asking for your vote. She wants you to call in, ask any question you want about District 1. A lot of problems over there in terms of crime. Hey, you've got, you know, I heard one thing today about the potholes in the street. Let's take care of that. But crime is the number one issue. Uh, the mayor talked about it yesterday in releasing that proposed budget. 436, Me TV, option 11. Let's talk about the issues in District 1. We're back in just a moment. Now, why don't you tell us the whole story right from the beginning? All right, from the beginning. This is the city, Los Angeles, California. My name's Friday. I carry a badge. Police officers. You any idea who the other man was? My partner's Bill Gannon. Program? We got just one big question. Yeah, when? Now on MeTV Fresno, Xfinity 187. 
All right, back here on the program, and I'm very happy to have in the studio today and very glad to welcome her for the very first time. She's running for City Council District 1. She is a candidate asking for your vote, and you can call and ask her a question if you want, if you live in District 1. Hey, even if you live outside the district, I mean, who cares? Call in and ask a question at 436-MeTV, <laughs> option 11. Esmeralda, welcome to the program. Your first time guest here. How do you like it so far? Not bad. Well, I haven't Thank been you that tough me. on you yet, right? <laughs> See? Not yet. Not, <laughs> not That's yet. That's the key. Oh, man. So, anyway, walking door to door in the district, let me ask you about that first of all. And you actually rode your bike yesterday, mm -hmm. right? Has that been a difficult process? That's the first part of the question. The second part is uh, how long have you been doing that? I've been at it for about nine months. And the walking door to door is actually the most enjoyable piece for me because okay. I get to connect with a voter and really take time to listen to what the issues and concerns are um, in our community. Okay, and talking to the people when you walk door to door, are they friendly and open when you ring the bell, first, first of all, for the uh, most part? For the most part. At this point, um, a lot of the voters have gone numerous contacts, so some of them are a little, you know. Have they already made up their minds um, who they're going to vote for in, in, in that district? For the not? most part, um, yes and at least for the individuals that I've spoken to, um, but there are still a segment of, of the voters that say that they're still waiting. From the potential voters that you talk to in that district, what is their number one concern? Um, safety in the neighborhood yeah. with property crime, especially um, that's an issue that across the board throughout the district, because the district is very diverse. Yeah. Um, but safety and um, jobs is something that comes up at the door as well. But there is a lot of crime in that district, District 1. And as you know, in releasing the budget, there is District 1 right there, encompasses a quite a bit, a big, a large portion of the city. And uh, yesterday in the budget to release uh, the proposed budget by the mayor, she's adding uh, some officers. In fact, let me just read here as you keep that map up there. She wants to add. Um, well, wants to maintain the 717 officer police force and 34 cadets to uh, the Fresno Police Department, although uh, about 20 were sworn in yesterday. And the Fresno Fire Department, she wants to up that to about four, roughly four. She wants to purchase uh, new fire engines, four of them, one truck and one water tender. What do you think of that? I'm excited to see that brighter days are ahead. Um, for our city and that there are some resources there. Um, mm -hmm. I believe it's the beginning. I don't know if just those uh, additional will solve um, the current situation, but I, I believe it's a start. Yeah, it's a, it's a start in the right direction. It's a move in the right direction mm -hmm. as far as the fire department is concerned. And the police department, I've heard Jerry Dyer say he'd like to have up to 800 officers on the street right now. He's far short of that right mm -hmm. now. Would yeah. you like to increase the, the, the police uh, force to up to 800? If we have the resources, um, I also think that we need to be really efficient how we, how we do that because I think what's important and what people want to see is really patrols. Um, so trying to figure out how we maximize the presence um, really out in our community. Yeah, how do you do that? I mean, well, the only way to crack down on crime is to put the police force out there you know, the presence has to be out there in the street so these thugs or gang members get the message, hey, you're not going to prey on mm -hmm. innocent citizens. Yeah, I think that's one way. Um, I think it's a combination. To address the safety concerns of our community, we have to look at a comprehensive plan, not only um, be reactive, we need to be proactive and look at how we're going to invest in our young population so that then we don't face our later also problems yeah, in our I community. Think, I think the police chief would probably agree with you on that because he is for being proactive mm -hmm. uh, instead of reactive to, to a lot of certain situations. Although police force, <laughs> as you well know, um, there was a police uh, shooting uh, yesterday yeah. or last night, so they, they are reactive if they have to be. There's no question. Mm -hmm. Always have been. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. Uh, whoops. Well, you were on Connect With Me. Uh, 436, Me TV Option 11. Do call in. Do turn down the sound. I want to read something else from the budget. It says they want to, well, dedicate about $2 million for street improvements. Is that a major concern in District oh, 1? major concern and I'm excited to see that yeah. um, it's just gonna be but how much how, of that money it, well how will it be allocated yeah, how I, much of that money will go to your district yeah. and 
I believe that I will be a strong advocate in really making sure because there's a lot of needs in riding my bike and walking and driving through it, just seeing um, potholes and even some neighborhoods that don't have sidewalks and um, their streets haven't been repaired in Why years. do you want to run for city council? Why are you running? You know, this decision I happened last summer um, when I really saw the lack of leadership. There was a special election where we've spent over a million dollars of our taxpayer money. And so my reaction to that was that we could have used that million dollars for um, infrastructure improvements that our district need. And so I believe we need good leaders. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, my comment is just about the police department and allocating more funds. They don't need any more funds. On top of that, they just need to be better utilized. They don't help out people. I call because my brother-in-law shows up at my house with a gun. The dispatch, dispatch, nobody saying it's a verbal dispute. And so affairs has gone on for over two years. Nobody's accountable. So you don't think we need more police in the city? We have to make it right for everybody. If you call the police and they don't show up, what do you do? Yeah, good point. And that's the common, um, you know, comments that I get at the door, that when there's property crimes, cops don't show up to your door, but it's because um, they don't of the have priority. The staffing. It's not priority. They don't have enough people on patrol. Right. So, but there's other officers working elsewhere. So we have to see where, especially when, when we don't have the resources, we got to figure out how... Um, we're going to be working with our resources the most efficient way. But that's in every district in the city. If you have a property crime, they're probably not going to show up. Yeah. You probably just have to file a report or something online, uh, from what I understand. And so that is a major problem. But how do you go from last summer or a year ago or whenever it was, uh, our city was on the, that close to, to going bankrupt. And now mm -hmm. all of a sudden we have all this money. We're hiring cops. We're hiring fire fighters we're getting new equipment for the fire department our budget is one billion dollars how mm -hmm. do we go within a short few months how do we go from bankruptcy uh, on the brink <laughs> of to this well Can you explain it I, I cannot explain it because I don't have all the information. I think that's one of the major things um, with our local government. We need to really be transparent about um, what we have and what we don't have. And it seems like last year, um, like you said, we were on the bridge of bankruptcy. Um, and then today um, we have money to and resources to hire. So Where did that money come from? Well, we are seeing the economy get better, and that's the reality. Um, I do believe that brighter days are ahead of us, and so um, that money that is coming f from additional revenues, property, um, sales tax revenues, um, and it's showing that people are feeling a little bit more confident with the economy. Yeah. Okay, we're talking with Esmeralda Soraya. She is a candidate for uh, City Council in District 1, the primary on June the 3rd, 436, Me TV Option 11. Do call in. She's uh, here waiting for your call <laughs> and questions. Yeah, we're back in a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Whirlpool appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Touch the new Whirlpool Ice Collection. It offers a modern style made to create an inspiring kitchen experience. Save big on this Whirlpool Black Ice or White Ice Kitchen. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Back here on the program today talking <laughs> your favorite topic, politics, and we're glad that Esmeralda Soraya is here. Now, you work for Henry Perea currently, or well, junior, I'm, junior, yeah. that is. I'm yeah. on a leave of absence right now because my focus has been the campaign, but yeah. yes, I work with him. How's he doing? Hey, he's got to come on here. You know, his dad's been on here many times. Yeah, you got to call him up. I don't have um, his schedule, but... Okay, what's his number here? <laughs> I'll call him right now while we're on the air. No, just kidding. Hey, let's get back to this city thing. Put up a, pay, a picture of Mayor Ashley Swearingen releasing the proposed budget yesterday. There she is. She's been in office for a while. Well, this is uh, her last uh, term. And she's running for state controller. By all accounts, she's leading in the polls, endorsed by the LA Times of all papers. I think they want a Republican and a Democrat. That's why that happened. But anyway, uh, to make a long story short, are you in favor of her running for state controller? I don't really have an opinion about her run. You know, she, if she thinks that that's good for her and for the state, 
I think anyone is open to run. I, I just have a personal opinion, though. I'm so focused on my race. I but if you got into office, would you care? Would well, you feel like she's abandoning the city? Well, it's that's one of the comments that I've heard. And so, yeah. you yeah. know. Okay, caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Rob, I'd like to ask you a question uh, concerning uh, crime uh, in your, you know, air district and whatnot. Uh, and I think a lot of it has to do with uh, not so much the air that you live in L.A. Uh, crime's gonna, always going to be everywhere mm -hmm. in the good part or, or, yeah. or in the lower part of the town and districts. But I do understand that uh, most of the crimes are committed in that good areas when they least expect it, especially when they're senior citizens and they're not aware of what's going on around them. Whereas if, if, if they're going into a poor area and all that, they don't, they're not going to get anything there. So the majority of the problems is, is that it's a lot of the police officers are concerned more in the good areas. And when they go to the bad areas, as, as they're saying that they don't cover a lot of uh, areas, it's because for the simple reason they don't have the manpower, number one. And, and police officers always get a bad rap, okay? I know a lot of areas in my town uh, where, uh, you know, the officers come and, you know, they take the reports and, you know, the crime has been committed. But as you as a woman, you have to understand, too, you know, people are always going to give you that negative thing, okay? But I can see by talking to you uh, and uh, just looking at you is that you're you're worried about the crime and, and well, not around the year area. Yeah. And that, that's that's important, you know. It's not always a man that does a good job, but a woman. Yeah, this is like a, They always say a woman is a... You know the, the stronghold in a family, which is good. Right. You know we have to, as as you know, uh, as a person. Uh, Listen, this isn't this uh, isn't but about. I would like her just to say. Right. Hey, I appreciate your comments. Very very uh, um, insightful on your part. But it, this has nothing to do with being a man or a woman or black or white or Hispanic or anything. This has to do with crime. You're running for council to try to improve the situation. Yeah. By the way, you you would be a female on the council. Um, doesn't seem like you'd be intimidated by that at all. No, but I do believe that it's an important factor because if we look at um, the diversity and what you we bring to the table, I do believe that as a woman, I bring a different perspective because if we're talking about policies that are impacting our children, our families, um, our seniors, women just have a different perspective. You think it's too male dominated up there? You so tell you tell me. There's seven. No, in, I'm asking you. You're running for <laughs> office. I, I do. I do believe. You do. Be I, well, the, the, I the believe mayor, that the, the mayor obviously is a female. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a we have but a. But the policies are um, passed and and made by an all male council. Right. Mm -hmm. So you think it's too male dominated right now at City Hall? I believe that we could benefit from having a female perspective. Right, but that would be up to the voters. Yeah. That would be up to the voters. You know, it's, it's not an appointed position. It's yeah. a, an elected you're, position. You're we'll correct. See, we'll see what the voters have to say. Hey, put up a picture of Mark Standrift. i got to ask you about that. Now, don't cop out on me. This guy's making 125. Are you making 125 grand a year? What's this guy doing? I wish I was making 125. What is this guy doing for 125? I've never seen his face on TV once. I've me never. Either. Uh, so that's the first time I see a picture of him. Do you agree with this hire? She just hired this guy out of Sacramento. No, so nobody was qualified in Fresno to take yeah, this job for half the money. I didn't agree with the hire. I think the timing of it just also kind of um, yeah, I know <laughs> brought sour faces to many of us, um, especially when we are short staff on code enforcement, which is something that our neighborhoods need. Right. Uh, we hire someone with you know six figure yeah. salary. I know um, that doesn't sit well. Yeah, it kind of rubs you the wrong way a little bit. Yep. You a Democrat or Republican? I am a Democrat. Democrat. So who would you side with on the council if you were elected? <clears throat> Excuse me. You okay? Um, yes. Right. So specifically, well, my goal is really to work with everyone. I will tell you that. Um, and right, I've but met. But guys like Brandau and Olivier and Lee Brand, they appear to be on the Republican or mm -hmm. conservative side, where a guy like Sal Quintero and Oliver Baines, can, you know, they, they appear to be on the left-hand side yeah and i believe that there are issues that so you um, would side more with <laughs> look at you why well 
I just want to know. <laughs> well, I am a Democrat, and there's right. no that's no secret. Right. Um, I believe that I'm going to work well with everyone. Um, I've met with the majority of them um, individually, and there are some right. issues. I, I believe that we care. We all care about the issues that our city is facing. So I think that it's time for us to really come together and find um, solutions so if it came together. Down to you to have policy issues and differences with a guy like Brandau or Olivier more so than you would Cantero, right? Well, I'll try to convince them. And that that is going to be my goal: persuasion and right. show them facts. Okay. Another call, caller. You're on the air with our guest today. Go ahead. Yeah, I just had a comment about the Mark Sutton guy. It basically <laughs> seems to me like we paid for him to be her public relations person for her campaign. <laughs> I don't know. Being a public relations person, shouldn't he have at least done some public thing that he was hired? Yeah. 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 Well, that's a good observation on your part. I appreciate the call. I'm sure a lot of people feel that way, oh, yeah. that he's just a mouthpiece for her campaign. So we'll see what happens. Hey, Esmeralda Soraya is here running for council. District 1, my friends, 436 Me TV, Option 11. See, we, I haven't been so bad. Yeah. Really? Not so far. You got 10 minutes so left, far. though. We're back in a moment. Twelve. This is Adam 12. It stars Martin Milner as Officer Pete Malloy, Kent McCord as Officer Jim Reed. One Adam 12, Roger. This black and white patrol car has an overhead valve V8 engine. It develops 325 horsepower at 4,800 RPM. It accelerates from zero to 60 in seven seconds. It has a top speed of 120 miles an hour. The automobile has two shotgun racks, one attached to the bottom portion of the front seat, one in the vehicle trunk. You want me to drive? Now on MeTV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Back here with our guest, Esmeralda Soraya, running for Council District 1. And by the way, happy belated birthday. You just had Thank a birthday you. last month. I won't mention okay. the date, but uh, <laughs> you're all of 32 years old. Amazing. So you went to law school at Davis? I did. Okay. Why don't you open up your own law practice? I mean, you could do that instead of running for council. Well, I, I thought about it, and I do pro bono work, but my real passion is in the policy world. Right. And that's something that I've been working on for many years, um, ever since I was in Sacramento. Yeah. So when my contract is up here, see, so you could represent me here, right? <laughs> maybe. Okay. May I'll see, think about what, it. Maybe. 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 Okay, you'll think about it. All <laughs> I'll right. I'll think about it. All right. Let me ask you about Fulton Mall. Let's put up a picture of Fulton Mall. If you had been sitting on the council, this is a yes or no <coughs> question, by the way, very simple. Uh, would you have voted to open up the mall? Well, that's a tough one, I will tell you. <laughs> and you and I had this discussion before, and I'll keep my answer the which, same. Which is what? Um, what we talked about was that I don't know if just opening the mall will bring people to the downtown area. What I would have liked to have seen is a plan that incorporated District 1 because it, it, it does encompass tower. And there's an opportunity that I feel that um, is being missed by not connecting Tower up the cultural arts area and yeah. really um, building that synergy. I think there's opportunity there that we're missing. And so I right. hope coming, you know, joining the council that that's I will. That's not part of the plan that. because that's not part. They don't consider that part of downtown revitalization. They yeah. want people to flock downtown to Fulton Mall, the baseball stadium. Uh, but you, if you were on the council, you're not sure how you would have voted? Well, I don't know that the the opening will, you know, bring the people and flock the people downtown. I think it's a comprehensive plan that needs to take place, which is mixed use housing, making sure that um, the way that they that they develop that developers can actually um, develop there, because you know the process. The but you're not sure how you would have voted though <coughs> at this point if you were on the council. Well. One thing I will tell you is that I do give credit to the to the mayor for doing something different. You know, it's it's a it's an attempt to try to change things downtown and her commitment to revitalizing the opening of the mall. I can tell you that I don't necessarily agree that it will bring the people down there. I, yeah. I, I do believe that we also one of the things that I believe Sal Quintero has mentioned is really um, taking a look at what's there and being culturally um, inclusive of the population that already uses the mall. And it I don't think that like we've seen that. It sounds like you're a little bit on the fence. You're not sure what you would have done had you been there on the council. Well, I would have asked a lot more questions, I will tell you that. Yeah. Um, because I, I'm not completely convinced. And so I would have pushed a little bit more and asked more questions yeah. before really making the decision. Hey, how about BRT? That passed, too. That's mm -hmm. $37 million. We do have a call. I'll ask you about that in a second okay. here. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi. I wanted to know what she has to say about the, I think I read it in the Fresno Bee about 
the people that were, the three people actually pushing to open up the, the mall, uh, the downtown mall, mm -hmm. are now leaving Fresno or wanting to leave Fresno. And what did you say about that? What did not, you think about that? I haven't heard that. I'm not sure. I haven't sure. heard that no. either. I haven't heard that uh, about uh, those, those particular people. But mm -hmm. uh, anyway, I want to move on from the mall, which is a confusing issue. Uh, not too confusing because everybody has an opinion, but... Um, yeah, I guess it's hard to say what you would have done had you been on the council. Unless you're actually there with the yeah. information in front of you, and you got people from this side pushing you and that side pushing you, what about BRT? What would you have done? They recently passed that, too, and only serves a small section of the city. Yeah. $37 million. So I do believe that um, the investment in our BRT, in the BRT system, is a step in the right direction. You would have voted um, for it then. Well, there was a second vote that took place. If right, you no, remember, the first one was in January, I, and, and they I don't revised know, yeah, it. and I don't know all the details on the revised version. Um, the only the thing that are I, smaller in yeah, the revised version, the and only the stations thing, are further apart. I have a problem with the the process. I will tell you that. In, I support in what, in what way? Because the first step was um, community engagement was v a big part of it, and yeah. then how are we going to go do backdoor deals? That's not okay. For me, it's about the community and making sure people have a voice. You think this BRT thing was a backdoor deal? You tell me. It was. It happened within weeks after it had. It got Seven voted down. Seven weeks after. Yeah. Do you think that they really went out to the community? I didn't hear anyone come to District 1 to talk about it. I've heard various stories. You know, Doug Vagum, so, uh, water rates, by the way. Doug Vagum is going to be back on this program. Do you agree with the raising of water rates? No. Tripling in three years. I don't agree with the plan that they passed. Um, mm -hmm. I would have done it differently because I've talked to a number your of water rates, by a, the way, number, up there. a number of of voters that are concerned. We have a lot of low income yeah. um, seniors on fixed income that even a ten dollar, thirteen dollar increase is gonna um, hit their pocketbooks. They yeah. it'll be less food for the month. For well, them. when Doug Vagum comes back, uh, he won a big court victory. Of course, he's won all of them, <laughs> but uh, he's gonna come back. I'm gonna ask him about this backdoor deal in BRT and perhaps even the Fulton Mall, that maybe these are favors, perhaps favor, but you know, the mayor's yeah. pushing this, pushing this, pushing this. Is this a payback? Is this a favor for something in exchange? You believe that happened? I don't know. I don't know what happened. And that's what I want to find out because I, I do support investing in our public transit system. It's ridiculous that we have um, over half a million people in our city and we can't move around really well, the thing easily. Is, I mean, hey, when I filled in for Manders, I had one caller call in and said she went to the doctor's office using BRT and it took her five hours. Yeah. Okay. Why not fix the whole system citywide? Well, and I think that it's going to be incremental s steps. Yeah. Yeah. But do, do me a favor. Just look in that camera there and tell our people out there why they should vote for you. Well, thank you, um, John Ellis, for having me here. Um, the city needs new leadership. And if we look at the past decisions, we need someone that's going to be a strong advocate for our community. I have a track record of advocating on behalf of Valley families on issues that are impacting us every day, air quality, um, water, water quality, public safety, and the endorsements that I have garnered over the last nine months really prove that um, there are a tremendous support in our community and they want to see change. So I look forward to working hard on behalf of you and being an advocate for our community. Website? Um, website is www.esmeraldasoria.com and you can feel free to call me on my cell phone. My phone number is out everywhere, 559-920-0579. I want to make sure that our community is engaged and that they feel connected um, to their next council member. Okay, that's going to do it for us, Esmeralda. Thank you very much for being thank here. You. I appreciate it. Uh, not yet. Don't get up yet. We're not done quite yet, but oh. uh, good luck to you in the race. I appreciate thank you your so much. time. All right, a different viewpoint. Hey, if you want something different uh, on the city council or someone different, uh, vote for Esmeralda, but uh, we don't, we're not endorsing any candidate here on Connect With Me. We try to be fair and balanced. Tomorrow, Rachel Hill running for judge. Back uh, again tomorrow. See you then. Frigidaire.
It means the first electric refrigerator, the first room air conditioner, the first compact electric range. It means a history of innovations that give you the best results and make your home life better. And now we introduce our latest innovation in cooking, the Frigidaire Gallery Range with Symmetry Double Ovens. It's designed to cook multiple dishes at multiple temperatures so you can prepare the entire meal at the same time. And our latest innovation in cleaning, the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher. Its unique wash arm gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation.